Hey, what's up there, YouTubers? It's me again, Brian, aka Gamer55551. And I am back with a My Two Cent video for this week, for the week of December 13th to the 19th, where I take a look at some of the stories that caught my attention and give you my thoughts and my opinion about them. And we have five stories to cover for this week. Um, the one we have to do is with the scalper situation that has started to get out of hand to the point where it seems as though we're might it seems that politicians might step in on this though whether you think that's a good or bad thing remains to be seen um we also are looking at basically the situation looking at comments that doug bowser has made in terms of an interview he had with polygon especially with the idea or the possibility that game pass may or may not come to the nintendo switch we're also going to take a look at basically um, all three of the big three of the console manufacturers, Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo, teaming up to do something in regards of online safety. Whether you think that's good or bad, that remains to be seen. Though, I'll also take a look at the latest uh, Nintendo Direct, in this case, the Indie World Direct that happened. And of course, the big story that still keeps going out, and that is the whole Cyberpunk 2077 debacle of a mess that has been. Um, really starting to grab a lot, a whole lot of um, headlines and all that stuff. And for any, any of the stories that I talk about, I'll have a link down in the description down below of where I got some of this information. You could take a look at it, at it yourself. But before we get started, we'll do basically what is basically the um, quick my two cent part. Um, stories that somewhat caught my attention, but not not going into a huge amount of details um, in them. But we do want to st start with the first one, which is basically uh, Retro Studio is still hiring now. They're they're hiring more for people for Metroid Prime 4, looking for recruiting a boss um, AI design and all that stuff, which obviously great that Retro is hi hiring though, but unfortunately it seems as though we're still going to be, we're still, um, Oh, it's going to be a while until we see Metroid Prime 4, which is sort of um, unfortunate, though. Um, we also learned that supposedly from this Capcom hack and all that stuff, that Nintendo may have paid around $6 million to have Monster Hunter Rise exclusive on the Nintendo Switch, as but for basically a time exclusive for about nine months and all that stuff. This may, which may, may kind of make sense considering we, that one of the leaks also pointed out that Monster Hunter Rise and Monster Hunter Story 2 could make its way over to PC um, as well, so... That is, um, that's kind of interesting, assuming this information is true. We also learned that there is an add-on for Doom and Doom 2, and I think Doom 64, um, for, that, that is out today for the Nintendo Switch, so, and I think for anybody who has Doom or Doom 2 or Doom 64, I think, on other systems as well, so... That's nice. More add-ons for the Doom games, though. Um, we also learned that several new NES and Super NES games are now available to download for the Nintendo Switch uh, online, though. One of those is Donkey Kong Country 3, Dixie Kong's Double Trouble, which is certainly nice. Um, I enjoyed the Donkey Kong trilogy on the, back during the Super Nintendo um, heydays and all that stuff. Donkey Kong Tr Country 3, I... It's a good game, but just never reaches the level that Diddy Kong's Quest um, did, though. We also are learning that Microsoft and Warner Brothers Pictures are um, basically teaming up for to have a, con a contest where people can help, I think, design a game based around the upcoming movie Space Jam 2 that supposedly will star LeBron James and all. It's an odd, uh, interesting, um, interesting team up that's going on, but still, we'll be interesting to see how this plays out. And it'll be interesting to see how Space Jam 2 does, considering that I remember the original one coming re-released back in 1996 with starring you know michael jordan and all that so it's be very interesting to see how this um plays out we also learned that control ultimate edition that will be getting an update not only for i think the ps5 but also i think the xbox series s and x that will have um graphical options including playing the game at 60 frames per second if you don't want to turn on like any of the graphical bells and whistles that will be coming out on february 2nd but a physical version with all this stuff will come out i think a month later i think in march i'll have to double check though although this game has sort of gotten a little bit of a controversy where for those who bought the vanilla version will not be able to have access to some of this update and all that stuff yeah that situation did not sit well with a lot of people and all 
Um, we also learned that Ubisoft is now selling XP boosters for Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and not everyone is happy with this announcement because of the fact that this wasn't mentioned in the review and all this stuff, and then they try to sneak this in. This is kind of the situation we saw with Crash Team Racing, where there wasn't any microtransactions when the game came out, but when they started, but after the game came out, after reviews are out, um, they added microtransactions to it, and that many felt that was a very shady thing. And honestly, I would say, yeah, it, it is really um, a shady thing to be exact. Um, we also learned that one of the characters from Super Mario RPG's Legends of the Seven Stars, Gino, if I'm saying his name correctly, is now in Super Smash Brothers for the Nintendo Switch, but only as a Mii fighter. And depending on how you want to view it, though, some... They apparently not everyone is happy about that. They've taken to Twitter and all that stuff. Um, you can lo love it or hate it. That's what it is, though. Although I can see why most people would like to see Geno's um, become an actual character and all that stuff. And last but not least, um, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate has now been updated. This one has now the announcement of the new fighter Sephiron from Final Fantasy VII, though it's not, I believe it's now available. Again, I'm not a big Smash Brothers fan or anything like that, but for those who are looking forward to this update, here you go, you got your new fighter and all. <clears throat> okay, with the quick might you sent part now done, we'll get started with our first story, and this one has to do with the whole Cyberpunk 2077 and the huge debacle of a mess that has turned in. It's uh, Since that game has been released, it's been controversy after multiple controversies, though. And depending on which system you're playing on, your experience is going to be varied, though. If you're playing it on PC um, or even Stadia, that's right. Yes, the game's also on Stadia as well, and I've tried a bit of it on Stadia. Your experience might be, from what I've been hearing, could be good and all that stuff. But as far as um, on consoles, it's been a mixed bag in some degrees. Supposedly it runs well, supposedly it runs okay on the PS5 and the Xbox Series S, but there has been some issues um, with supposedly some crashes and all that stuff. Xbox Series S, from what I've been hearing, has been, it, from what I've been understanding, it runs well, that it, some people are saying this is what the PS4 and Xbox One version should have been when it launched, though, but the PS, but the PS4 and Xbox One version, from what I've been hearing, it's just bad, it has crashed, it, there are a lot of major issues uh, with that game, and considering the fact that not everyone has a PS5 or an Xbox Series X or anything like that. I'll get to the part five on that one regarding that situation though. Um, right now, there isn't really a whole lot of options though. Although I've been hearing some people are seem to be not running into really any major issues or anything like that. So it's going to depend on what system you're playing and what condition the game is in. But either way, it looks like it has been a major, major issue with CD Projekt Red. And it the situation has gotten worse from the refund situation to their reputations now pretty much has been tarnished to a certain degree. Okay, right. In several articles, though, the first one from TechSpot shows that, the, that CD Projekt Red has now seen their stock drop um 30 percent though has also has traders feeling pessimistic though so from a st from an investor standpoint it looks like it has really kind of um took a dive on this though meanwhile over at bloomberg it says that the cyberpunk 2077 debacle has cost the founders the creators one billion dollars of wealth so they lost a lot of money on this whole situation the article from bloomberg seems to point says that part of it says this quote the technical glitches plaguing cd project reds cd projects sa cyberpunk 2077 game has cut more than one billion off the wealth of the company's founders perhaps more seriously the quality first image of the studio has been shaken and may not be easy to win back. CD Projekt Arctic shares plunged by a third over the past 60 days as the numbers of bugs plagued the highly anticipated futuristic game promoted, prompting an apology from the firm and an offer for refunds of gamers on previous generations consoles. Short sailors have also started targeting the stocks with, with short interest up from less than 1% of a free float in September to 8.3 on Monday, according to market kit data. 
Um, so it's they talked about how this company was built, and now they once started joining the ranks of like the wealthiest poles to their the polls and now they're fa- now according to the article reads that however now they face a fight to savage the studio's reputation and prove that cyberpunk will also be playable for owners of older generation consoles which are more common than the just released new one though um they now have they there is now a huge scar on the reputation of both the studio and its management though um said one of the analysts at bo BOS Bank SA said in an email, In only a couple of days, CD Projekt Red fell from the most adorable studios to the most hated one. Restoring trust is not impossible, but it will need much time and effort. So, obviously, though, um, this whole situation has gotten bad to it. And what's really gotten bad was the whole refund situation as that went... There was a back and forth on that one. CD Projekt Red talked about how you could get a refund and all that stuff. And then, of course, Sony basically talked about, at the time, that you could not get a refund if you bought the game, especially through their digital storefront. But now it seems Sony has sort of changed their store, changed their position on that. It's possible they may have been pressured on it. And it was from an article from, it's basically, from basically Push Square. I mean, yeah, Push Square, though. Um, it reads that Sony removed Cyberpunk 2077 from PlayStation Store, pledged refunds to all PS Store purchases, though. Um, the original story reads, a quote, In an unprecedented and frankly mind-blowing move, Sony has removed Cyberpunk 2077 for sales from the PlayStation Store until further notice. The company said it strived to ensure a high level of customer satisfaction though and that it will offer refunds to anyone who purchased the open world rpg from the playstation store if requested this followed a dismal week from cd project red who apologized for not paying enough attention to the the way the title performed on standard ps4 co- consoles the company also prevented medias like push square from seeing the title on console until hours before launch which to me sounds just as bad as the situation we saw with um Assassin's Creed Unity, remember that situation back, I think it was back in 2014. The rest of course's history as the release has been marred by bugs and performance issues. Um, the Polish studio has since said it aimed to make the game playable and stable without glitches and crashes, with a new patch due before Christmas, and further choose schedule for January and February retrospectively. The final cost of all, the, all this, according to the company, is irrelevant as it seeks to rebuild its reputation. Um, it says, the article says, Sony has done the right thing in the end here, of course. There were reports last week that it was honoring some refund requests, but after a statement from CD Projekt Red suggested that fans will be able to get their money back from the PlayStation Store, the platform holders started blocking them. It's now launched a page dedicated specifically to refunding for this particular title. Of course, the Japanese giant will need a better digital return policy moving forward, but it is a good start. If you want to get your money back, um, they said... That you could, they have a link to the to that site. Although, please keep in mind, you won't be able to play the game if you do request um, a refund. For those who want to purchase Cyberpunk Trunk 2077, then you're either going to have to pick up a physical copy or wait for it to be republished on the PlayStation Store. Just to be clear, if you already own Cyberpunk 2077 and don't request a refund, you'll be able to continue playing on either PS5, PS4 Pro, or PS4 um, Unstructed. You will also receive all future patches as promised by CD Projekt Red, and the title will remain in your library. So, obviously, if you already own the title and you don't want a refund, you can still keep it and all that stuff. But otherwise, as of right now, you can't purchase the you can't purchase the digital version through the PlayStation Store at this moment. However, it does look like at the at this moment though. It will remain on the Xbox Store for now, as an article from Pure Xbox um, reads, um, basically, quote, that Microsoft isn't currently planning to do the same thing, at least according to CD um, Project Red, who has told Reuters that it, that it's not not in such discussion with the Xbox decision. Their comment also was like, we are not in, not in such discussion with Microsoft at this moment. It remains to be seen whether Microsoft will respond to Sony's bold decision to remove the game entirely until further notice, although it should be noted that Microsoft has dedicated refund systems unlike the PlayStation Store, unlike PlayStation, so the overall process um, um, 
of return to a return of a digital cyberpunk 2077 purchase should be um should be smoother on a whole and they cd project red posted on twitter that they are working hard to bring cyberpunk 2077 back to the playstation store as soon as possible um now we've seen cases before where games have been pulled from the digital storefronts it has happened though one that i could think of recently i remember hearing was the re supposedly the remastered version of final fantasy crystal chronicles um that was the online structure was so bad that in i believe in australia and new zealand they had to pull that game from the storefront and Square Enix is now trying to work hard to fix the online components part to get the game back working, at least the online part of it working and all that stuff. But man, this this is just really, pardon my language on this, but this is like one shit storm after another for CD Projekt, right? This is bad. This is really, really bad for them. And to see Sony finally pull the game from the storefront, it's pretty amazing. Although I wouldn't be surprised if they may have been pressured to do that. And it wouldn't be the first time Sony's been pressured into something. Um, I think like maybe a year or two ago, they were pressured to act, to have cross-platform after the whole situation with Fortnite where they wouldn't that they were not going to allow cross-platform with other consoles all that stuff which is kind of interesting because nintendo which is known to be conservative on a lot of things were more open to cross-platforming and if they're more open though and you're not that says something right there so it's really bad for cd project red and yeah they've really really damaged their reputation though and they're gonna have to work really hard to earn back the reputation that they have truly um lost i mean some people are saying this is as bad as this is even worse than say fallout 76 or anthem and it could be it is possible that that could be the case now could the game recover it is possible i i won't deny the fact that it is possible this game could bounce back we saw this with Final Fantasy XIV. We saw this with No Man um, Sky. So, yes, there is a possibility that this game could technically bounce back. But CD Projekt Red definitely has their uh, work cut out for them. And they're going to have to work really hard to get not only this game working again, but also earn consumers' trust and all that stuff. And given the debacle of a mess this has turned into, it does make you kind of wonder, could we see the PS5 and Xbox Series X version um, delayed? Could we see the DLCs that they were planning, even the multiplayer that they were planning? Could those be delayed? And that is a possibility. So overall, it's a this is a big mess on CD Projekt Red's side. They really did not, they really did made a lot of piss poor decisions that put them in the situation that they are in right now. And they're going to have to work really, really hard to earn consumers' trust again if they want people to buy from either their digital storefront or buy the games that they make or anything like that. So they got, they seriously have their work cut out to be exact. <clears throat> okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break. And when we get, when we come back, we'll get to part two. And this one is taking a look at the indie world that nintendo hosted um basically or their indie direct if you correct to prefer to call it that that though so we'll take a quick break and we will be right back okay and we are back with part two of our mind you set <clears throat> excuse me my two cent video for this week and for this one we're going to be taking a look at um the latest direct called the indie world nintendo showing off you know several indie games um coming to the nintendo switch which is kind of interesting because we haven't had a direct in a while and all that and while this may not be well actually outside of the presentation of Sephiron for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I forgot to mention that part. But while this may not be the direct for everybody, though, especially if they're looking for what, you know, the next releases for, like, the Nintendo Switch or anything like that, um, there were some announcements, some games. Not all of them caught my attention, but there were two that I thought um, stuck out with me the most, and I'm definitely going to keep an eye out, though. So as far as what they announced, though, courtesy of 
Let me where. Right, okay, there we go. Courtesy of MyNintendo.com. They shut off the big one, which was Among Us, though. That was probably the big one that a lot of people supposedly like, and that is, quote, Discover which of your friends is a secret imposter in Among Us, the survival social deduction game that has taken taken outer space by storm work together to complete tasks on the spaceship before the imposter sabotage or takes out the other player think a crew member is acting strange call for an emergency meeting and discuss who the suspected imposter is but make sure you're confident before you vote to eject someone into the cold reaches of space um it launches right now today uh, and has cross-platform play so that should be interesting for a lot of folks um Spelunk, S-P-E-L-U-N-K-Y, Spelunky, if I'm saying it, apologize I'm not saying it incorrectly. And two are also coming to the Nintendo Switch. Uh, brave your way through treacherous um, tunnels and caves, outfits with survival supplies and, and so forth. And that one is coming out in summer 2021. Um, Grindstone, which is a Cappy's Hit puzzle battle. Um, um, Smash is, is comes to the Nintendo Switch. Clobber Creepy. Creeps to rack up huge combos and earn precious um, grindstone dough to craft, you know, get the di- those to craft new gears and overcome d- overcome enemies, obstacles, and boss encounters. Um, it's basically offered as a time exclusive right now on the Nintendo Switch, and it's out right now. Um, Kaleo, C A L I C O. Um, supposedly from Peachy King Games. Um, that's out today, and supposedly it's a basically a magic girl cat cafe and cuddly animals um basically so you that kind of stuff not really my cup of tea but there's an audience for all that kind of that super meat boy forever i've heard about super meat boy here and there and all that stuff i never got a chance to try it though but i've heard some good things though and suppose and that game will be out on december 23rd as a console launch exclusive Cyber Shadow um, is basically coming out on January 26, 2021. It definitely, you definitely get, I'm getting a bit of a Ninja Gaiden vibe out of that game. And that certainly isn't a bad thing. Um, Tunich, T-U-N-C-H-E from Leap Game Studios. Um, is it, That's an interesting game set in the Amazon rainforest. And it's a 2D um, beat-em-up with hand-drawing um, looks. It also has the character Hat Kid from A Hat in Time. That game is expected to arrive on the Nintendo Switch in March um, 2021. We have Very Very Valet, which is basically sort of like get behind the wheels to pick up pick up, park, and return cars in over 20 locations, though. Up to three players can join in, in this frantic, fast, frantic and fun um, party game. It comes to the Nintendo Switch as a time exclusive in early 2021. And you have Fistifers, which is basically a physical based party game featuring feline, fierce, fierce felines. You need to whack and pounce your way to victory, though. Um, the game supports uh, basically local and online multiplayer. Um, the games are going to come out to at spring of 2021. Happy Games, which is solving. Um, um, un- unnerving puzzles, enduring a few unsetting songs, and survive face-to-face encounters with suspicious, smiley faces. Earn your sweet dreams in spring 2021 when Happy Games launch on the Nintendo Switch. I saw that during the indie world. It kind of, based on the visuals and art style, it kind of comes off between what we've seen with games like World of Gro- World of Goo and Little Inferno to something you would see out of like a Tim Burton movie. It's both kind of creepy, but kind of interesting at the same time. Um, we've had basically a call Alba, A L B A, a wildlife adventure from Us Two Games. Um, it's creating this new, basically they're calling it a new open world experience where she, where this person visits, she visits her grandparents on a Mediterranean island, ready for a peaceful summer of wildlife exploration. Exploration. When she sees her beloved island in danger, in danger, she realizes that she needs to do something about it. Recruit volunteers for your cause. Help heal sick animals and clean up wilderness, and ultimately save the island. Um, basically, the game is coming to the Nintendo Switch in spring 2021. And the last one of the game is called um, Goshina, G N O S I A. Um, and it basically reads, in this one-of-a-kind sci-fi adventure game, a spaceship is overtaken by aliens who can take the form of humans, meet an ecstatic cast of characters, and help unravel their mystery in a f- fascinating narrative spin on social deduction jo- 
genre where you play against up to 14 NPCs, overcome your fears when this game launches on early 2021. So the ones I will say that kind of st kind of stand out for me the most, the ones that I that I like are basically Spelunky, S P E L U N K Y. That that and its sequel, though that's one I'm looking forward to. Grindstone I think looks kind of interesting. That's one I would definitely keep an eye out for. Super Meat Boy um, Forever. Um, that one I might try when that comes when that comes out on December 23rd. Um, Tunchi, T-U-N-C-H-E, that one looks interesting. I mean, I'm a big fan of 2D beat-em-ups, and this one looks really interesting, especially since it's set, you know, in the Amazon rainforest, and the art style looks nice, uh, looks nice on that one. But the big one for me, and maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just an old, old school person that I am, is Cyber Shadow. That's the one that stands out for me the most, because... I'm def like I said, I'm definitely getting a bit of a Ninja Gaiden or a Shinobi vibe to it, and that certainly is a good thing. And I just love the what looks like the 8-bit retro style to that game. So for me, that's the big one that stands out. I'm like, maybe I'm maybe because I'm a little bit more old school and all that stuff, but that is one I'm definitely looking forward to when that comes out. When does it come out again? Let me take a quick look. Um, it comes out on January 26, 2021 darn i gotta wait till next month but it is what it is so overall not a bad indie world um there were some games that i thought clicked with me um the most and ones that i will look forward to there are some that eh, i mean there might be an audience for it but it isn't my cup of tea and all that stuff but hey some people are enjoy the indie world some people don't hopefully something clicked with you so like i said overall it wasn't a bad indie world. There were some neat announcements, and there were some that, like I said, might appeal to some, but just didn't really click with me um, that much. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to take a quick break. When we get back, we'll get to part three. And this one has to do with basically Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo teaming up to basically do something in regards of online safety. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part three of our My Two Cent video. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at a situation that's involving both the Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo. And this has to do with the issue of online harassment and so forth. Now, I'm sure at some at some point, some people have dealt with online harassment before. Some of it has been minor, but we have seen cases where some people have taken it maybe a little too far to the point where we've had situations like the swatting where someone would make a, someone would take time, time and resources away from local law enforcement to call into a situation that really that it, that's not, that's really a deplorable act for anybody to do to the point where we're now seeing people really clamp down on it and put sh harsh, punish, harsh punishment to those who have committed swatting and all, and all that stuff. Well, it seems as though the big three, uh, at least the big three console manufacturers, are seem to be going to be doing their part to try to address the issue of online harassment. Whether this succeeds or not, that remains to be seen, though. But in an article from let me get it out. There is it. Okay, there it is. From an article from Game Industry Buzz, Biz though, it reads that quote: Microsoft, Nintendo, Sony released joint statement, joint commitment to online safety. We we can accomplish more when we work towards the same goal. So we will each continue investing, in evolving, and amplifying our approach to user safety. The article reads that. Quote, though, Microsoft, Nintendo, and Sony today release a joint statement expressing a collective commitment to ensuring their online space are free from hate and harassment and safe for younger players. We believe gaming is for all people of all ages, including our youngest and most vulnerable players, the company says. Technology makes compelling entertainment experience possible, and we want to assure that those experiences, especially when they involve interaction with others, are positive and respectful. All players deserve to have a fantastic social gaming experience in setting where respect and safety are mutual. 
Um, the company said that they will continue investing in evolving and amplifying approach to user safety, prioritize the safety of their most vulnerable, vulnerable players. The trio group, the trio group, they're committed under the three principles: preservation, partnership, and responsibility. Under preservation, the commitment made were to empower players and parents to understand and control gaming experience with easy to use parental controls features, regular communications around codes of conduct, and investing in technology to help thwart inappropriate con conduct and content before a player is subject to harm. For partnership, the three platform holders are, have committed to working with the rest of the industry, communities, and government bodies to ensure user safety as well as conducting shared research for the benefit of the industry. We believe that hate and harassment um, ex or exploration, exploitation of young younger players in any way have no place in gaming, they said. Um, we, we partner with our commitment to promote safety gaming behavior and encourage the use of reporting uh, rep reporting tools to call uh, call out bad actors. Um, respecting re regarding responsibility, they pledge to hold themselves accountable for making their platform safe beyond reporting and removing bad behaviors of bad actors. The console maker said they will notify law enforcement if they see players breaking the law or believe a player is at risk of, of in intimate intimate harm. They also say they will ensure the players who are punished for code of conduct violations understands the requirement for continued engagement with our platform. Protecting players can be challenging in the digital and often instrumentalist, possibly not saying correctly, connected world, they said. This partnership signifies our commitment to work together to improve player safety and ensure gaming remains truly for everyone. So, I would say my approach on this is that it could be a good thing, but it can also be something that could be abused. While I understand online harassment is an issue that does need to be addressed, especially the issue of swatting, as we've seen certain cases have, of this has happened before, the part that kind of worries me just a bit is, well, a couple of things. One, it kind of gives the impression that the parents don't have to do anything about it. They'll just let, they'll just let Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo do something about it. Which, not 100% sure about that. And two, it you do have to ask what would qualify as harassment. As there may be a situation where some people are just joking around and not really doing anything offensive, and suddenly someone might accuse someone of saying that's harassment right there, even though that may not be the case. So. It's somewhat of a gray era, a gray area, I could say, of this whole situation. I mean, it's it doesn't sound bad. It does. It really doesn't sound bad. But I I am worried about how this could be at the same time kind of abused in a certain way. But it's too early to tell if that is truly going to happen. We'll have to wait and see how this all plays out. So overall, I think. It, there is good intention out of this. I don't disagree, but at the same time, I am kind of worried about can this go a little bit overboard? Can something that may not be harassment at all later, you know, like someone cue someone actually harassing them when even when it was not? So it, it is a worry that this could technically be abused in a certain degree. <clears throat> Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we'll get to part four. And this one has to do with an interview that Doug Bowser, the president of Nintendo of America, had with Polygon, especially in regards to the po of if there's any possibility that Xbox Game Pass could make its way over to the Nintendo Switch. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part four of my of our My Two Cent video. And for this one, I do want to talk about particularly the possibility of Xbox Game Pass coming to the Nintendo Switch. Now, this has to do with basically this started out with rumors going around when we learned that Cuphead was coming to the Nintendo Switch, and this led to a lot of speculation: could Xbox Game Pass come to the Nintendo Switch and all that stuff? And this also kind of kind of 
been reamplified as we see Banjo come to Smash Brothers, to Orin and the Will of the Wasp, and the Blind Forest come to the Nintendo Switch as well. So it was interesting to hear a response from Doug Bowser, who pretty much, I believe, introduced himself at the 2019 E3 when they did their digital presentation, which I have to say the skit with Bowser and Doug Bowser, that that was very clever. That was an interesting way to introduce him and all that stuff. And I'm sure there were a lot of memes about Doug Bowser and all. But he was interviewed by Polygon, and this had to do with a lot of questions were being asked. Some of these were ranging about the Switch Pro and all. Others were basically... um, Others were basically, um, let me see, Switch Pro. And then, of course, you know, the Joy-Con drifting and all that stuff. Some people may view his response with typical, like, CEO response, which is possible. Some see it as he may be dodging some of it, though. But either way, he he basically gave a response to the situation. Whether you agree with him or not, that's going to be your call on this one. But one question that was asked was about in regarding to whether um, Game Pass, you know, the Netflix style service that Microsoft has for their systems, though, um, will be in a way coming to the Nintendo Switch at all, though. Considering that we've heard Phil Spencer made some comments before in the past of how he wanted to push, you know, Game Pass on as many platforms or many um, devices out there as much as possible, though. Well, he did give a response from Polygon, but the article kind of sums it up in um, Nintendo Life, though. And then from an article from them, though, um, he, it, he responds to the questions. It's, it says, but the article reads, quote, Mumblings of Xbox Game Pass one day launching on Switch have been doing the rounds for ages at this point, especially since a 2019 rumor which correctly predicted Ori and the Blind Forest arrives on the system, stated that it could well be in the works. Nintendo has Microsoft's chummy relationship ever since it had only added the speculation, yet yet here we are on the verge of 2021 with no Game Pass in sight. What better way to clear the matter? matter uh, what better? What better way to clear up the matter than shoving the topic right in front of the face of Nintendo of America President Doug Bowser? In a recent interview with Polygon, Bowser was asked about Nintendo's own Switch Online service and whether the company considered it would be counter-offering to products like Game Pass. Though so he quote said about one of his comments, he said, "Quote the way the way I look at it." is we want to offer consumers choices on the Nintendo Switch and obviously the ability to buy the games and play the games that they choose to play. The fact that we have well well over an 8.0 attach rate to every Switch unit that has been installed over the last four years is an indication that consumers want to consume content that way. The 8.0 attach rate there refers to the number of Switch titles sold per console. In other words, on average, Switch owners have each purchases more than eight individual games. While Switch Online does offer a legacy titles as part of the subscription, Bowser's comments suggest that Nintendo is more happy, more than happy to continue selling its latest games in the traditional way away from subscription. Here, here's what Bowser had to say when press further being asked if, directly whether or not Nintendo is considering adding Xbox Game Pass to Switch. And he said, quote, We are always looking at various ways we can engage our consumers right now. We have found that our category um, and third-party publishing publishing catalogs, excuse me, we found that our catalog and the third-party publishing catalogs that available, whether it's through Nintendo Switch Online or through frontline game purchases, have really been allowing us to do that. Of course, if the launch of the Game Pass on Switch was just around a corner, the president of Nintendo America wouldn't slip up and give um, the get and give the game away in an interview beforehand. But his comments surely gives us the impression that Nintendo isn't practically interested in having the service on its platform. So the the fact that the fact that this rumor about Game Pass coming to the Nintendo Switch, I will admit, it kind of felt like a long shot to be exact, though, because. I had given even though Nintendo and Microsoft has sort of like a better relationship, though, and, and not not a bad relationship. I would say I've always felt as much as this would have been interesting to see on the Switch, a long shot. Given Nintendo's history of being, you know, very protective on a lot of their products and their IPs, sometimes they're in the right on this. Sometimes I will admit they do go a little bit um, 
overboard to be exact. So I'm not surprised if they say no to bringing Game Pass over to the Nintendo Switch, but I certainly wouldn't be against it. I mean, I certainly wouldn't be against if Stadia were to come to the Nintendo Switch. Do I think it's going to happen? I say unlikely, like with Game Pass though, but still, it would be interesting. And if Game Pass were to come to Nintendo Switch, let's say they did bring it though, the question is how would that work? And some people point to, some people believe that if that would happen, there may be some games you may not be able to play. Like for example, Doom Eternal is on the Nintendo Switch. If that's the case, it might be possible that they say you can't play Doom Eternal on X Xbox Game Pass on your Nintendo Switch. You would have to play the, the Doom Eternal that is for sale on the Nintendo eShop and all. So it would be really interesting to see how this works. But I'm not surprised that they are saying that they would say no and all that stuff, given, you know, it's their system and all that. And they may not, they may, and if they say no, they say no. Now, could that change over time? That is a possibility. And we've seen some strange things um, during the generation of consoles, um, or shall we say, during the PS4, Xbox One, and Wii U, and somewhat Switch era. I mean, we've seen Microsoft, like I said, put Cuphead and Ori and the Will of the Wasps and Blind Forest on the Nintendo Switch. We've seen Nintendo put some of their IPs on smartphones and tablets, like with the Mario Kart um, and all that. Even Nintendo has done their, will be teaming up with Universal Studio with like a theme park and all that. So we've seen some crazy things before, but so it's certainly, I would say it's not completely out of the realm of possibility though, but I wouldn't be I wouldn't be shocked nor losing sleep over if they don't bring um, Xbox Game Pass to the Nintendo Switch or even Stadia or Nvidia GeForce Now to the Nintendo Switch. So overall, I'm not surprised by Doug, Doug Bowser's answer though. I, it, you, I just feel that that was a, even even with the partnership between or even the friendship that. Nintendo and Microsoft has it was it still felt like a long shot for Xbox Game Pass coming to the Nintendo Switch so I do kind of agree it does seem unlikely but it's certain like I said before it's certainly not out of the realm of possibility and time will ultimately tell if Nintendo changes their mind and say hey Microsoft you want to bring Xbox Game Pass over to the Nintendo Switch knock yourself out but for now it, it, it does seem like it's unlikely, and I'm not surprised by um, Nintendo's response, or at least Doug Bowser's response to this, though. <clears throat> okay, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we'll get to part five. And this one has to do with the whole situation with scalpers regarding the PS5 and the Xbox Series S and X, and how, one, how it sounds like some politicians are trying... Are getting involved into this situation so we'll take a quick break and we will be right back okay and we are back with our fifth and final part of our my chi sent video and this situation has to do with the whole situation with scalpers particularly with the PS5 and the Xbox um, Series S and X though. Now, I was very fortunate enough to get my Xbox Series S since that was one of the one of the next gen consoles I was aiming to get though. In fact, when you compare to how the pre-order situation was with Microsoft to Sony, I would say Sony, I would say, well, actually I would say Microsoft was, in my view, it handled better. It was more organized, and I felt like you had an easier time getting an Xbox Series S than you would with an X. That being said, though, even though it may have been a little bit easier than Sony, people still had a hard time trying to get their hands on a next-gen console and all that stuff. And the pre-order situation was pretty bad with a lot of the whole bots and scalpers buying up all these systems and then selling them at outrageous prices online and all that stuff. And it's starting to have an impact on a lot of folks to the point where even some politicians have been starting to jump on and basically this whole bandwagon of a situation now. Whether that's good or bad, that remains to be seen. But anyway, in several articles though, so the first one, it shows that 
from Screen Rant that points out that PS5 scoffles could be to blame for low game sales. And they're reading that, quote, Report, recent reports suggest that aggressive scalpers are hobbling game sales for the PlayStation 5. Sony new console hit shelves last month and it's been in, it been like high demand, which I don't, yeah, it is though. Um, e- e- ever since, people are so desperate to get their hands on the new machine that one Amazon driver was even caught stealing a PS5 out of his own delivery truck, depriving a woman who brought the console as a birthday gift for her son. This extreme demand is heightened by a critical lack of supply, which has been height, which has been heightened um, since the since day one by scalpers. These unsculptured merchants use bots to hoard units as swift as possible and then sell them online at almost triple the market price. Thanks to scalpers, any retail site that stocks a console sells out in seconds. As awful as this practice is, it's proven disappointingly effective. Data shows that scalpers have made 60 million in profits since the release of both the PS5 and its competitors, the Xbox Series X. So, this isn't enough to keep the console out of hot water, though. Bloomberg has been doing its research and it believes that scalpers are having a serious impact on the development of PS5 by tanking game sales. There are too many consoles that aren't playing games because they're still gathering dust in scalpers' garage, so while the sales numbers for the console themselves are extremely high, game sales are critically low, roughly a third of what the console is selling. This denies the developers the fund and resources necessary to develop more titles for the new consoles, which will, which will sicken the PS5's long-term development. This is not to say consumers shouldn't be rushing, be rushing to buy from scalpers. Of course, on top of a moral reason not to support scalpers, scalpers, there is a risk of getting scam and receiving a printed photo instead of the console um, itself. Um, the best solution is best solution is for retailers to crack down on scammers before buying the console. And to, despite early struggling buckling under demand, some websites sets once some websites have begun taking concrete measures to prevent these op, uh, prevent these opportunists. Walmart, for instance, has reported canceling 20 million bots orders when it stocked the console on November 25th. The, pro- the preposterous scale of this cancellation just so how glutinous these scalpers can be. One can only hope that this is the start of a p- permanent measure to clear them out for good. Scalpels, of course, aren't the only thing hobbing the new consoles. It's been difficult. It's been a difficult year for everyone due to the COVID-19 pandemic and the lockdown it's enforced, and PS5 production has been hob- hobbied at every step. More consoles will be coming eventually, though. A recent job listing has even suggests that PlayStation Direct is expanding out, expanding out of the U.S., hopefully bringing PS5 restock with it on an international scale. For now, all that's left is for play- players to wait and dream one day of when everyone can get a... who wants a PS5 can get one. So... Yeah, it, it's been really tough, though. I mean, I've had a hard time um, basically getting a PS5. Even when Walmart puts up it saying that they'll have PS5s ready for people to pre-order, that's not always the case. The minute you put it on your cart, boom, it's taken off. It's taken off. So, yeah, it, it's been really bad, and especially when you see scalpers sell it for outrageous prices. I mean, I've heard stories of how they're selling, like, on eBay for $32,000. I mean, seriously? Thirty-two thousand dollars for a five hundred dollar console? Yeah, I, I'm. I'm not gonna spend that much. I'm not gonna spend that amount. I might just hold off until I can find one that's very easily though. Plus, I have my Xbox Series S, so that at least I got at least I got one of the next generation's consoles to be exact. Well, the situation with the scalpers have gotten so bad to the point that now we're hearing politicians in the United Kingdom are suggesting legislation to stop scalpers for PS5 and Xbox Series S and X. From Eurogamer, it reads that, quote, Since the release of both the Xbox Series X and S and PS5, stories of scalpers and scalping groups have dominated the headlines, with seemingly no consequences for those doing the scalping other than a tasty pile of profit. But now a group of politicians hope to take action as several MPs have put out forward a motion in the UK Parliament to prohibit the resale of consoles and PC parts that are that are significantly overpriced. As spotted by VG by VGC Video Game Chronicles, the motion is tabbed by six Scottish National Parties (SNPs). MPs called for the government to introduce legislation to prohibit the resale of gaming consoles and PC. 
components at price great, greatly above manufacturer recommended retail price, MRRP. The MP suggests that this could be similar in nature to existing legislatures for the secondary selling of tickets, which requires sellers to be transparent and avoid misleading consumers. The motion also singles out the resales of good purchases by bots as sometimes they could be made illegal activities. No. Um, so far, the early so far the early day motion has 21 signatures, but there is currently no set date for it, the, its discussion in the Commons. Commerce. Early day motions are intended to draw attention to the topic of interest, meaning this is more of a call for debate than a commit to commitment to introduce legislation. But the fact that it's been brought up is still not, not, noteworthy. Perhaps one day we'll see the introduction of as as a bill, but first we'll have to see whether the M, whether MPs are interested in creating legislature to tackle the problem. So far, no conservative um, MPs have signed have signed to support the motion, which isn't brilliant brilliant news considering they're the ones current currently in government. So it, it would be really interesting to see how far this goes, especially in the UK or anything like that. I assume right now, given where the UK is right now with the whole Brexit situation and COVID-19, it doesn't sound like this one obviously won't be tackled anytime soon. But it would be really interesting if it does get tackled and what the fallout could emerge if some, if an actual legislation has passed. Um, that would be really significant to see that happen. And if so, could we see other countries follow um, as well? We've seen situations before, like with Star Wars Battlefront 2, when the whole loot box debacle and the mess happened, to the point that authorities in several countries started to investigate whether they consider loot boxes as gambling. And that sort of created a somewhat of a domino effect. So it would be really interesting. Um, and some people may argue that politicians shouldn't step in to situations like this. And I can see the argument for that, though. And to some extent, as much as I would like to see them tackle this, I think there's a lot of issues like COVID right now, COVID-19 to be exact, that should be really um, addressed at this moment. But it's kind of fascinating to see this happen. So I'm very curious to see how this is all going to play out. So overall... Yeah, it is very hard to find a PS5 or an Xbox Series X or S for that matter, considering the situation of bots selling it um, at outrageous prices on eBay and or other sites like Craigslist. And the fact that we're seeing some politicians step in is both kind of interesting to a um, certain degree. <clears throat> Okay, um, this concludes this My Two Cent video for this week. And again, these are my opinion. What are yours? What are your thoughts about the Cyberpunk 2077 um, situation? Do you think this is a huge debacle of a mess for CD Projekt Red? Do you think they could rebuild their reputation? Do you think Sony was pressured to offer refunds and all that, given the whole situation with Cyberpunk 2077? And do you think it was right for them to pull it off of their digital storefront? What are your thoughts about Nintendo's Indie World Direct that they had? Did you like the Direct at all? Did you like any of the games that they showed off? Were there any games you were happy that they showed off? Or were there games you wish that they had showed off? What are your thoughts about Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo teaming up in terms of addressing the issue of online harassment and all? Do you think this is a good idea? Do you think it's a bad idea? Are you worried that this could easily be abused? What are your thoughts about the Game Pass on the Nintendo Switch? Do you think that it's unlikely to ever happen? Or do you think it's not out of the realm of possibility? And what are your thoughts about the whole situation with the scalpers in regards to the PS5 and Xbox Series S and X? Um, are you a bit disappointed that you're having a, a bit disappointed that you're trying to find one of these systems but are having a hard time though? Do you think politicians should step in and introduce legislation to crack down on these scalp on these scalpers, or do you think that they should not step in um, at all? Do you agree with what I said? Do you disagree? Do you have a difference of opinion? Um, as always. Sound off on the comment section below. Let me know what you think. And if you like this video, then I hope you hit the like. Then I hope you hit the like button. I would appreciate it. And I hope you do subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you do, make sure you hit the bell icon for notifications of any new videos I put up. Also, 
feel free to share this video if you want to and feel free to donate to my channel if you like. You can do it through PayPal me or Patreon. Links will be in the description of this video. And I will see you again next time when I do another video. Hopefully that will be soon. Until then, from Southern California, I wish you all a good day then. <laughs>